If you go to the doctor's office, chances are someone's going to take your temperature. <laughs> and in this day of global pandemic, they even take my temperature when I go to the gym. Now this doesn't tell anyone necessarily exactly what's wrong, but it does say if you have a fever that something's wrong. And heck, if you don't, then probably you're okay. Well, you can also take your engine's temperature. And that will tell you, A, if there's a problem, and B, if there's not. And let's hope that in all of your cruising, you'll always have nothing to worry about. But that's often not the case. So let's take a look at taking your engine's temperature. We're Bill and Lisa, and we've got a plan. To move from living on land to living on a boat. There's a lot to learn and a lot to do for us to get there. To make it happen, we've got a 32-foot tug. That's our classroom that we've named Free Ravens. So join us on this journey of a lifetime. We already know that diesel engines run hot. So taking a single temperature and saying it's hot really doesn't tell us anything. Instead, it's important to look at various aspects of the engine to see how it's operating. In order to keep track of these, what we've done is place little pieces of blue tape with a little dot on it that shows exactly where to take the temperature. Temperatures can vary in places considerably, just a couple inches in either direction. There's also a number that then relates to a spreadsheet that we've made. In this way, we can log temperatures across different days, watching carefully for any sudden changes in temperature, which could indicate the beginnings of a serious problem. But before getting into the engine, let's take a look at a couple of often overlooked temperatures that are still very important to monitor. Our tug uses a face seal or dripless seal. Water flows in through the bellows on the right, cooling and lubricating the two plates and flows out through the little tube on the top. If that becomes clogged, heat can quickly build up, potentially damaging the shaft itself. Another very old and very popular form of seal is known as the stuffing box. This utilizes flax impregnated twine to seal the water outside of the hull. If the stuffing box becomes overheated, the flax can melt out of the twine and the twine can become very abrasive, potentially damaging the shaft beyond repair and requiring a total replacement. Temperatures can be measured using a device known as a pyrometer. They can be purchased at most stores for under $50 and is an essential piece of equipment for any boat owner. Simply aim the laser at the area you want measured and squeeze the trigger. As I mentioned, diesel engines don't need any help in creating heat, but they do need help in dissipating that heat. And without getting into a whole course of diesel mechanics, there are two basic systems that remove heat from the engine. First of all, coolant runs through the block, pulling heat out of the engine. It then runs through tubes surrounded by raw water or seawater that then flushes it overboard with the exhaust. In most boats, there are other systems. By monitoring the heat in various areas of the engine, you can get an early warning that something is going wrong before catastrophic damage occurs. We measure the temperature of the coolant as it flows into and then back out of the heat exchanger. The actual temperature will vary according to the temperature of the seawater. However, you should see about a 10 degree difference. If you see a decrease in this difference over time, it's a clear indication that something is blocking your heat exchanger and needs to be looked at immediately. It's a good idea to keep an eye on the temperature of your exhaust manifold too. Be sure to shoot the 
laser beam at the top of the tube. That's where it's always the hottest. We also measure the temperature at each injector. This is the hottest part of the engine. But noticing that the temperature of one injector is significantly different than the others is an indication that something is wrong with that cylinder. And don't forget to check the temperature of your transmission too. Monitoring this often overlooked part of the engine can give an early warning that some trouble is brewing. And these are just a few of the areas you might want to monitor on your engine. Other possibilities are the thermostat, the oil cooler, the fuel pump, the oil filter. It's always a good idea to keep an eye on the temperature of your batteries. So come up with your own plan, your own spreadsheet that will keep you on track, keep you monitoring these important variables, and give you an indication over time as to the health of your engine. Good luck on your journey. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us on our journey, as we learn an awful lot and have a lot of fun. <laughs> we're Bill and Lisa, and we're going to live on a boat. <laughs>